All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. And thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Check them out in Emeryville or Corte Madera. The best barbecue you're going to find in all of Northern California is Pig and a Pickle. Get the brisket. Get the brisket chili is absolutely amazing. The potato chips cooked in the beef fat, amazing. You got to try them as well. Uh, Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. All right, we're still a few weeks before training camp, but Kyle Huszczyk, Niners fullback, who's one of my favorites, really interesting guy to talk to, went to Harvard, smart guy, really smart football player, and a straight shooter. Um, he's not a guy that says a bunch of things he doesn't believe. He's not a guy who, you know, you can, whatever he says, you can kind of take it to the bank. Um, that's how solid Huszczyk is. That's how smart he is. And he's a very valuable player for the 49ers. I mean, he can he can be the wildcat quarterback. They can flex him out wide. They can use him as a receiver. They can use him as a short yardage back. He can play running back, full back, wide receiver, tight end, H back. You name it. The guy can do it. Um, and Kyle went on the Rich Eisen show last Friday. And, of course, Rich started asking him, about the topic that all football players are asked about, the quarterback. <laughs> Everybody always wants to talk quarterback. Um, and, you know, it's it, it basically, um, you know, he just wanted to know about Brock Purdy. And what do, you, what do you think of Brock Purdy? You know, Purdy looks like he's the guy in San Francisco. Um, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan have stated it many times that they're going to start the year with Brock Purdy as their number one guy if he's healthy. And Huszczyk said a number of really interesting things. He first said it seems like Brock Purdy has the upper hand on being quarterback one in the competition. So at least from, from uh, Juice's perspective, um, Purdy's been really, really good. And if there's been a competition, he's won it. Um, and in the mind of Kyle Huszczyk, Purdy's the number one quarterback. And I think when he says that, in a lot of ways, he's speaking for the entire team. Um, because the entire team feels the same way. I mean, there might be a guy in there who, I mean, and, and when you're saying that Brock Purdy's the number one quarterback or QB one, that in no way is a rip at Sam Darnold, Brandon Allen, or Trey Lance. It's just a statement that Brock Purdy has done enough to show that he is the starting quarterback for the 49ers. Um, it's not, it's not a, a it's a positive comment about Purdy. It should not be perceived or taken as a negative comment about any of the other guys. Cause it's just not. And if you want to make it that, you're just looking for the negative. Um, but he basically said, hey, it seems like he's got the upper hand in the competition. And, you know, Brock Purdy as a rookie had a really good year. I mean, uh, you know, he played in the preseason and played incredibly well. So well that Tim Ryan and I, you know, got together on the field right at the end of the preseason. And we were just both marveling at Brock Purdy's ability to work the play clock down to like one in, in his first uh, preseason game. And that is such a, an advanced thing that you would expect out of a 15 year vet or somebody who's been in the league 10 years to see a rookie quarterback in his first preseason game, um, work the play clock down to one in the fourth quarter shows a level of awareness and understanding of the game situation that far exceeds the average rookie. So Tim was on it early. Why? Because Tim knows ball and Tim's a genius and he knows ball. Um, and I won't put myself in that category, but I feel like I know ball as well. But Brock Purdy as a rookie played in the preseason, didn't play week one, didn't play week two. In fact, did not play again until he was, in an emergency situation called off the bench when Jimmy Garoppolo went down in the Dolphin game. That Dolphin game was like the first week in December. So Brock Purdy played in August. He didn't play in September. He didn't play in October. And he didn't play in November. He sat the bench for three months. And he didn't become stale on the bench. He kept learning. And when he is, his number was called in December, without knowing it, he stepped in and played incredible, beat the Dolphins, stood down the barrel of their zero blitzes all afternoon and beat them. Then he beat Tom Brady and he beat the Raiders on the road and he beat Seattle in Seattle. And then he beat Seattle again in the playoffs. 
and then he beat Dallas in the playoffs. And Brock Purdy played really, really well. Um, in seven regular season games, Purdy completed 67% of his passes. I believe a higher percentage than any other Niner quarterback. You can look that up. Jimmy may have been right in the same neighborhood. But 67% completion percentage, almost 70% for a rookie. 13 touchdowns, four interceptions. That was in seven regular season games, six starts. He won them all. Niners ran the table. They went 7-0 and down the stretch, all with Brock Purdy. Then he goes to the playoffs. And in three playoff games, Purdy completed 65% of his passes, three touchdowns, zero picks. Won both of the games that he started and finished, and we all know what happened in Philadelphia. So that's what he's done. That's the track record of Brock Purdy. But the comments from Husechek were really interesting. When he was talking to Eisen, he's talking about Brock Purdy. He said he's a football player. The greatest compliment I could give anybody. He's a football player. And then he went on to say, you know what? The guy's played a lot of football. He started since his freshman year at Iowa State. And when you play quarterback, you need those reps. You need live reps, live bullets. These are all the words of Kyle Juszczyk. He said Brock was just reacting out there. He didn't have to think. He didn't overthink things. He was so well prepared because he had gotten so many reps at Iowa State that he didn't overthink it. He utilized his offensive weapons. He called the plays that were called. He took care of the football. The moment wasn't too big for him. And he operated the offense expertly. That's what he did. And that's what Juice basically said. And he basically just said, hey, look, you know, the thing that really separates Brock, I mean, he didn't make this point, but I mean, it's clear that he's making this point, is the reps, the experience. That What does Brock Purdy have on Trey Lance? It's the nuances of the quarterback position. It's, it's all the intangibles that you build up from playing the position. The guy had 47 career starts at Iowa State. You know, he, he's a young man at 23, but he's an experienced player. He was a four-year starter. I saw some pushback this week from people in Iowa who were like, Kyle Shanahan didn't, didn't uh, develop Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy was developed here at Iowa State in Ames by Matt Campbell. And you know what? They could be right about that. Brock Purdy stepped in and didn't need a lot of development. He was developed. And, you know, he didn't have to sit there and think through everything and overthink it and analyze it. He had those physical reps. He had those mental reps. He played a lot of quarterback. So if you say, what does Brock really have on Trey, Trey Lance? That's it right there. Brock is ready to play because Brock has played a lot of football. Trey is the other end of the spectrum. He has not played a lot of football. Trey's played one year of football in the FCS level on a dominant team since high school. So he's on the other end of that spectrum. And I think the 49ers, I mean, you say, why are they going with Purdy over Lance? That's why. Because Purdy's had the reps, made the mistakes, knows what to do with the live bullets, the live, you know, with the live reps out on the field. And there's no, you know, he's out there just reacting and playing the game. He's simplifying things and calling the play that's called. And, and he'll be even better this year when he knows the plays better and he knows the nuances more. Um, and then last year he got NFL experience. So he played in the NFL last year. He got playoff experience, he got preseason experience. He got regular season experience. He got battle tested. 49ers were not just another team. They were a Super Bowl contender that was trying to make the playoffs. So every game, there was something on the line. So anyway, I thought it was really interesting. It's, it's you know, we've made this good versus evil. It ain't. We've made this, you know, all kinds of different comparisons. It's none of those things are relevant. Kyle Husechek basically crystallized this whole thing in these comments to Rich Eisen. The Niners are going with Brock Purdy because he is a developed quarterback who has got all the experience and he's just out there playing and he's accurate 
and the minute the moment's not too big. Um, and he took on teams in the playoffs that were better, and he did not turn it over at all. So, you know, he's just he is a veteran type player in a in a second year player's body. But that's the reason. If you're asking why are the Niners going with Purdy over Lance, they're not going with the player with the biggest upside. They're not thinking long term. They're not thinking macro. They're thinking micro. And I don't mean that Brock Purdy's a small player. I mean, they're in the moment. They're thinking who can quarterback today to win today. And they're not going beyond that. That's their analysis. And he just verbalized it. So if I were you, I would go check out what Hughes check said on the rich Eisen show. I, I just kind of repeated it and read into it, but you can hear him in his own intonation. You can hear him in his own tone and flavor, and you can get your own sense of what he meant. But to me, it was really, really clear that Brock Purdy has won the respect of guys like Hughes check because he's played a lot of ball and he knows how to play. And he doesn't make a bunch of mistakes because he's, 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 he, you know, you need the live bullets. You need the live reps to hone your craft. He's gotten there and he's done it and he's ready to play. And that's why everybody's behind Brock. It's not because they're anti Trey. They love Trey. It's not because they're anti Darnold or anti Brandon Allen. They probably like those guys too. It's about Brock is ready to play and he's the most ready to play. And that's why you saw what you saw last year. And that's why you're going to see more of the same this year. All right. Hope you enjoyed our 49er video. Thanks to a pig and a pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug show. And thanks to all you guys for supporting the Krug show on YouTube.